It's good to be back as God's family. We were up in Fort Wayne last week. We got to see the brethren up there. It's always a treat to go up there. We appreciate that very much. Hopefully your week went well. And uh, summer's going fast, isn't it? Boy, school started this week in a lot of places. Uh, Pike Township, where we are, they started on Tuesday. So it's just really, really amazing that here we are. If I say the name C-3PO, you probably have an idea who I'm talking about, don't you? If you think back to the Star Wars sagas that are exciting for us to watch, we can picture that character. He was the gold robot for those who are droid, as they call him, who haven't seen that series. He walks like a human, and he has arms, but he has little uh, connectors on his elbows and that kind of thing. And uh, he talks, and he, he acts like a human being. And he can speak between six and seven million different languages, which I wasn't even sure they had that many languages, but I guess there are, at least in the Star Wars saga. Anyway, but the idea is that as a droid, he can think and he can reason and he can act like a human being, even though he's a machine. And, you know, he's a fictional character, but he's very real as we watch the movies. And when we think about it, we've all experienced a little bit of artificial intelligence, probably in our life. You have Siri on one of these things, right? Maybe in your house, we don't have it in ours, but you have the little plugins that you can put in. And Alexa can do her thing. Turn your lights on and off, or your furnace on and off, or your water heater, if you forget to turn those things down, traveling to the feast. And so we like the conveniences, don't we? That these, this artificial intelligence can give us. And really, in our age right now, it's really progressing pretty fast. People are trying to make a lot of advancements in this area so we can have life more easily uh, controlled in our, in our household, in our offices, or whatever. And so we have programmers and scientists are really working kind of feverishly to develop the algorithms so that a machine can think like a human. And my question is, will they succeed? The answer is no, they won't. Because I want to answer the question today, what makes man special? What makes man special? And the title for the sermonette is Let Us Make Man. Let Us Make Man. What makes man special? I have three points. They're very simple, and you probably know them. You could probably give the sermonette if I were me up here speaking. Point number one is man is made like God. Man is made like God. Let's go over to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. I imagine most of you could probably repeat this from, from memory, but it's good that we take a moment and go through these things because our world is really trying to develop machines that are like man, and it can never happen. They can do a lot of advancements, but it won't ever occur the way we see in the movies. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over the, all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now this word image means resemblance. And so man, and the, that word man it really incorporates both female and male, there's not one that's superior to another. God created each with talents and abilities to work together and to be a team. That's how he designed marriage. So neither is superior to another. That, that's an important thing for us to remember. Unfortunately, it's been abused through history. But it means resemblance or representative figure. And so man or mankind is made like God. So the, the fact that we can stand upright and we can walk we can think, we can talk, we can have the decisions. We're made like God. That's how God is. And there's a lot of descriptive verses throughout the scripture and Revelation and in Ezekiel that describe God's hands and his feet and his eyes and his hair. Very, very descriptive. And so we're made like God, both male and female, in bodily form and in our attributes. We look like God. Now, you may not like your ears or your eyes, but you know what? God made them. So accept them. God made us to look like him. We have a lot of variety in, in how we're made. And we're made as living beings. 
We know the word, the nephesh. We're made as living beings. It's interesting. I'm not going to read it, but just one verse back. It says, each according to its kind. We are made according to the God kind. That's fascinating. We're made according to the God kind in the physical flesh. God is spirit. We know those things. Artificial intelligence is exactly what it's called. It's artificial. It's programmed. Program, they can program algorithms to put the pieces together, but they can never program them to think and to, to make the reasoning that mankind has. They mimic something that is alive. The rope machines, they mimic something. It's not a living being. So it can't act. It can't participate or behave like a human because we're made like God. Second point is mankind has a human spirit. Mankind has a human spirit. Go with me back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Very basic truth that we understand as we answer the question, what is, what makes man special? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. What are we told here? For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. And so we have really two truths that are given here, right? We have a spirit of man. And we also are told that there's a spirit of God. Now, we're not going to read it, but you can reference Ecclesiastes 3 and in verse 21. There's also a spirit of animals, spirit of the animals. So God gave us a spirit. God gave us a spirit. It's called the spirit of man. It gives us the ability to think. It gives us the ability to reason. And so we can plan. We can look at a calendar and 30 days out. We can say, OK, I'm going to do this. In nine weeks, we can realize we're going to go to the feast. We can plan, and we can make designs, and we can think about the future. Animals don't do that. Animals have an instinct. Human beings have intellect. Animals have an instinct. Human beings have intellect. We can evaluate, and we can make choices. And it's interesting, I would encourage you to read the story back in Daniel 4. When God gives the spirit, he can also take it away. What happened to Nebuchadnezzar? Remember, he's walking to the top of the palace, and he gets very boastful, and he was told it was going to happen, and God takes the spirit away instantly, and he has the spirit of a beast. And for seven years, he lives outside like an animal. Rain falls upon him, his nails grow, his hair grows long, because God took away the spirit of man, took away his reasoning. Verse 34 in that story says, Nebuchadnezzar understood. He says, my understanding returned to me. So God gives a spirit. That's what makes us different and unique from the animals. We can think and we can choose. Computers must be programmed by who? Man. Man. They're programmed. Multiple algorithms are just that. It's an artificial instinct that is given to the, the machine. A machine can never be sentient. That means they can't be perceptive. They can't be aware. Now, they're really neat to watch in movies. We think about Data from Star Trek, maybe some other characters that you like. They're fictional. It's not possible. That's why doctors are puzzled when they try to bring life back to a person, they can't give the intellect back to the person. They might be able to bring the body, give it sustenance, you know, res uh, not resurrection, but sustenance again, life, but they can't give the spirit. God gives that. God gave it to human beings. Animals can never be like a human. They don't have the same spirit. It's a different spirit. So that makes us very, very special in God's mind. But we're not complete. And that brings us to point number three. Point number three is mankind is created with a purpose. Mankind is created with a purpose. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3 and in verse 1. 1 John 3 verse 1. 1 John 3 verse 1. 
It says here, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. That's what God designed us to become, his children. To be the very being and have the very essence that he has. He created us to become spirit-born into his family. Now, how does that happen? There's only one way. And you have to receive God's spirit. And we know that process it involves repentance, forgiveness, baptism, and then laying on of hands, we receive the gift of God's spirit. And we know God will then take that spirit and transform our bodies. And we look forward to that, don't we? But man was created with a purpose. God has a plan which centers around his son, Jesus Christ. Robots and artificial intelligence have their purpose to make our life easy, right? Well, maybe in the big picture. They have a purpose. Maybe it's to vacuum your floor or maybe it's to water your lawn. We can set up timers and those kind of things, right? We have the little robots that can move all around and vacuum. They have a purpose, but it's not to become God. Man was created to become children of God. Machines do not have the potential to be anything other than what they are, a machine, a droid, not a son of God. Physical life is only a temporary time span that God will use to train us and evaluate us and where he can place us in his family and in his kingdom. So I like C-3PO. He's a fun guy, a little bit quirky, has a really odd sense of humor. He's written in the character as, you know, dropping the lines at just the right time. But the idea of making something the mechanical to think and to act like God is not possible. Mankind is much different. We're made in the image of God. We have a human spirit and we were created with a purpose to become the children of God. And that is what makes man special.